Let's go to Brian in Valley Center, Kansas. Brian, what's your question for Pastor Adriel? I have a lot of people that are, thank you for taking my call, by the way, but I have a lot of people that I work with, and, and we discuss things like election and predestination. And I'm just curious, you know, what your take is on that. Uh, why would we, uh, as Christians, if we're working on the Great Commission, spreading the gospel, uh, sometimes that people argue that it doesn't make sense. Why would we do that if, if we don't know or, or if we know that some people are not going to heaven? Yeah, uh, really uh, a, a great question um, and a controversial one, because this is one of those issues that, that Christians disagree on, that they differ on. There are some people who think, well, God chooses people for salvation, but based on the fact that they first chose him. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as, you know, election based on God's foreknowledge or foresight. And it's the idea that God foreknows the people who are going to choose him, and then he calls those people his elect. And then there are others, Brian, and, and I would be in this group as well, that see election, God's choice, uh, not as based on anything that we do. It's not even God foreseeing that we would choose him first, but that it's God working in us first so that we might be drawn to him. Now, uh, you know, the, the reason that people, you know, uh, are sometimes made uncomfortable by this is because they think, well, then, well, then what's the point? What's the point of, in evangelism if God is the one who, who chooses? Uh, somehow the Apostle Paul is able to hold together that, that tension, we might say, uh, in, in, in a very clear way. I, I think of what he said in Romans chapter 9 as he's writing about non-believers, Jews had not embraced the gospel. He says, I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. And then he says in verse 6, but it is not as though the word of God has failed. You see, he's writing about the fact that many of his kinsmen, according to the flesh, did not embrace the gospel when Jesus came. And he says, this breaks my heart. I could wish that I were a curse so that they might be saved. But here's what you also need to know. I have this passion for them. I want to preach the gospel to them. But it's not that the word of God has failed. And then Paul begins to talk about the doctrine of election. For he says, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel and not all the children of Abraham and not all, all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. And then and then as, as the chapter continues, he, he goes on to talk about God's sovereign choice in election. And so here you have this, this heart for the lost, I think that Paul is showing us in particular there, the, the, the Jews, his kinsmen, and yet this, this belief in the fact that God is still sovereign over salvation. Um, and so this is, you know, again, part of the tension that we see in scripture. There is this absolute sovereignty of God. And, and we also know that we are responsible, um, that God holds us accountable, that all people everywhere are called to repentance and faith. And so I, I think we have to hold those, those truths, those realities together. It's not a, it's not a contradiction. And of course, we also know that God doesn't owe salvation to anyone, that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that it's only God's, God's mercy that he calls people to himself, that he draws us to himself. And so uh, that would be my view. And as, as I said, Brian, there are, uh, uh, excuse me, if, uh, yes, as I said, Brian, there, there are differences of opinion here um, within the church. Uh, but I think we got to go back to the scripture, read Romans 9, read Ephesians 1. Even in the Old Testament, it talks a bit about uh, the doctrine of election, God's choice of is Israel in places like Deuteronomy chapter 7. Those would be good passages to meditate on as, as you wrestle through this. Hey friends, thanks for watching that video. I trust that it was encouraging to you. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're looking for more great content coming from Core Christianity. And if you haven't done so yet, would you give this video a like? It's one of the ways that we can continue to get the word out. Uh, so like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content. May the Lord bless you.